the, the people fight for the pulpit. You know that everyone wants to get the microphone. And we think that ministry is only when you are visible from the pulpit. There are people who have prepared this conference. Praise the name of the living God. Can you imagine if there is somebody who is not seen on the pulpit, but he cooked for us to eat? Hallelujah. He was in the kitchen. Did she serve? Yes, sir. Praise the name of the living God. Can you imagine? There is a person, and there is a person who is a person who is but he washed the church for us to come and enjoy. Hallelujah. So those are two dimensions of ministry. The one is very visible. The other one might not be visible, but sometimes it is very strong than those who are visible. Praise the name of the living God. Sometimes the people who pray and intercede for the conference, they carry the weight more than us who are coming to enjoy the, the, the presence of the Lord. Praise the name of the living God. Can you imagine a person who gave their money? They never told us they gave. Praise the name of the living God. When we are preparing for the conference, they never said, I am coming with my money on the, on the pulpit. But if you know, because of their giving, the conference has become a blessing. Praise the name of the living God. So all of us are blessed. Lift up and say, I'm blessed. I'm blessed. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. And uh, I want to recognize uh, sons from my house. Uh, Steve is there. Steve, I'm happy to be here. Mark is there. Uh, Peter, Peter Manzia, I'm here. My coffee. That's my first one, Dot. She's uh, Vivian, to give a coffee. That is Sam, hallelujah, to give a coffee, Sam, hallelujah. That is Mercy, you can see Mercy over there, to give a coffee, Mazzini. Bless the Lord for these wonderful people. I just ambushed them and told them, don't meet for practice, come to the meeting. So, Mr. Mayor, hallelujah. And uh, we bless the Lord for what he's doing. Amen. Uh, well, Pastor uh, Sam has spoke the word of God, and surely we've been blessed. Hallelujah. And I want to pick up from where he left. And uh, I have something in my spirit. I have something in my spirit to speak to us in this. Sisi, you are good, Mama, you are good. Sisi, you are good. About to come here. Um, to get you to read it, I say that I session B, the session we are doing. Now, by the way, when I'm about every minister should understand, and that's what Pastor Mary is calling edits. He's calling edits. Me, the story, character of a minister, and uh, Pastor Sam has touched about some things we should not do. I always tell my people that everything about him is ministry. Praise the name of the living God. Amen. Everything about you is ministry. You're not just a minister when you're on the pulpit. You are, you are a minister everywhere. Praise the name of the living God. Amen. Let me talk about the worship of Kidogo. Did you know even your dressing is worship? Amen. Even your dressing is worship. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Your mood is worship. Amen. Praise the name of the living God. Amen. So we don't, we don't come to a place of saying that ministry is only when you are doing something. You, in fact, ministry is not an event, it's a lifestyle. Amen. Yes, sir. Praise the name of the living God. Amen. Ministry is not an event. It's not an event. Ministry is a lifestyle that we must live every day. Praise the name of the living God. Amen. Let me tell you something. We are very different as ministers. Very different. There are things that other people do. They are not bad things. It is not sin. But to us, we cannot do them because of where God has placed us. Praise the name of the living God. That's not where we will do. So, we must take ministry with the weight that God takes it. Praise the name of the living God. Did you know? Mungu anachukua hicho kitu wa unakifanya na uzito mkubwa. Some of us take the ministry so lightly. Can I tell you something? Ministry is not simple. It's not really simple. Some of us, I can tell you the things we've gone through. If every minister will stand, and I won't talk about that now, I won't talk about uh, vessels that God uses, becoming a vessel that God uses. I don't know if that's edits, but allow me to speak what is in my heart. Hallelujah. Becoming vessels that God uses. I was saying before I introduced my message that ministry is not simple. 
the few days or many days that I have done ministry, I have discovered that ministry will cost you. Ministry will make you to have sleepless nights. Now, by the way, if you have never had a sleepless night because of ministry, check yourself. If you have never walked like a madman on the road, and, uh, and, and people, if, if everyone is clapping for you, clapping for you, take care of yourself. Sometimes the applauses of men can take you to the grave. The claps of people. People can clap you to the grave. People can, 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 people can celebrate you to your grave. Praise the Lord. If you have never, if, if you have never walked on the road like, uh, if you have never been left alone, even your wife doubts you and says, why are you really called? Or even uh, you go and share your mission and uh, someone else, uh -huh. they tell you, go to a psychiatrist. I think uh, something is wrong somewhere. Hallelujah. And the truth is, something is wrong somewhere. And what is wrong? It is mixed. It's called calling. Praise the name of Calling as a price. He has a price tag. Unfortunately, most people don't love that word price. When you say free medical camp, free water, people will come. Free K, Unga, people will come. Free education, people say, wow. Hallelujah. When you say free what? Free Ifagio, people will come. Free lunch will be served. People will come to your meeting. But when you talk about the price, the price of Unga, the price of the dress, people shut up. Because people don't want to pay the price. Unfortunately, there is nothing you will ever gain in the kingdom of God if you are never ready to pay the price. And what you have not paid the price for will never be valuable in your life. Let me talk to young girls who are here. When someone wants to marry you, make sure they pay. They go and pay that one. If they don't pay, they take you as a government. If they pay. <laughs> Hallelujah. Is that good preaching? Hallelujah. Everybody say with me price. That's not what I want to talk about. Just, just mentioning this. Can we talk? Can, can I not preach? We just talk. Yes. Can I just keep touch here and there? Yes. Price. Everybody say with me price. price. Ministry has a price tag. Whoever thought that ministry, serving the Lord, it's very easy. It's a lie. Let me tell you, people who have not paid the price, it is the price you pay. In. Do you understand? Yes. It is the price you pay that produces the glory that you walk in. Your authority is determined by your level of sacrifice. That's why we can never be equal in the kingdom of God. We will never. There are people who, the sacrifices they are paid, the sacrifices they are made in the ministry will forever speak for them. Praise the name of the living God. Sacrifice. Unfortunately, many believers come to church and they want to serve the Lord, but they are never ready to pay the price. In fact, the first people who should carry the weight of the ministry, the weight of the church, it's not the pastor only. It is the pastor together with those four ministers. Yes. Before other people give, the minister should have given first. Yes. Before we tell the members to fast, the minister should have fasted first. Yes. Are you getting what I'm talking about? Yes. Before we tell them to come early, we must be there earlier than them. Right.
vessels that God will use. And I will talk about them. So let's read the Bible in the book of 2 Timothy chapter 2 and verse 20. Verse 20, verse 21. If you are there, please say Amen. Amen. 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 20, verse 21. Touch my son. He's just come. Now you say, that's wisdom. These guys can be to the house. Wisdom will be there. So the guy has become my technician. He says that everywhere you go, I will carry your microphone and tell them I am your technician. They will not push touch your microphone. Eh? Then, then Vivian tells the guy, then Vivian tells me, after wisdom has connected, Call me to open the heavens for you in worship. Before you preach. Hallelujah. So I'm raising this man. And uh, I'm doing it deliberately. Hallelujah. That guy can connect everything in the Samuels. That guy can connect every machine. Amen. By seven, he's out of the house. He leaves us in the house. He says, At 6 that the guy is taking to 7. He's in the church. Uh, it's good to motivate your children. Simple. Good to motivate. Second Timothy chapter 2, verse 20, verse 21. In a large house, are you there? Yes. Can you read for yourself one place, God? In a great house, there are not only vessels of gold and silver, but also of wood and of earthenware. We command you demons to get out and 
And the demon said, wow, we know power, we also know that Christ, but as for you, you came in disorder. Praise the name of the living God. Hallelujah. So by you say, I come back to the view of the Ayeshima, na kuna jambo vingine visivyo vya kuheshimika. Lakini Bible haijatuambia kwamba mtu hawezi kufanyika hicho chombo cha heshima. Sasa verse 21 inasema ya kwamba na mtu akijitakaza if a man purifies himself. In other words, you have to be your choice. Yes. You can become whatever you want to become in the house of God. Yes. You can receive any anointing. The Bible says he who God anoints, he does not give him anointing the spirit by nature. He does not you, you can receive anything. We can go to any limit in the kingdom of God. What limits you is your understanding of who you are in the kingdom of God. Yes. Hallelujah. Amen. You know one of the things that happened when I got born again, I was a very shy boy. Very shy. Very shy. I never wanted. I never wanted anything about me and being I don't know. I was very shy. And I don't I, I never wanted anything to do it because mama and I was just like that. But there was a man, my the guy, the pastor who led me to Christ. May the Lord bless him wherever he is. Called Pastor Kanao from Nara Gospel Revival Center. A very old man. And uh, one day I was seated in the service like this. I he saw something in me, but I was so shy, I would not uh, you know, stand before the people. So one day in the service it was full. Say then today my interpreter is Simon. My friend, you know I sweated everywhere, including the shoes. Then how can that happen? And then he called me in front. And you know, all those the few minutes I was there, I was not I was praying to but I will never come back to this church. Because how can he? You know, I never wanted that. But he continued to tell me you can become there's something inside of you. And I began to desire one of the things that we did in our in the narrow, there was a guy who was so good in singing. So good in singing. It was called Mose. Stephen and Joe. He was a Uganda. I, the guy, would sing, my friend. He would go to a crusade. The guy would sing. Just singing would bring people. The guy was serious. I mean, the guy would sing. The only problem is that he was a very jealous man. Now, let me tell you. He is, uh, by the way. Do you know? Ministers who minister in front can block others from rising. Yes. Yes. Did you know that? Yes. The microphone, I am the man of God. I am the man of God. The microphone should not be touched by any other person. Mm-hmm. That's why you see things like fighting. Yes. Fighting who should get the microphone, who should be one. Those are childish manners. How many of you to be Ministers who minister can block others because now that guy, he would not allow us to get the microphone. He was the man of God. Man of God. You know that thing? He was the man of God. And those were the days our pastor would call like in a boost, you know, like in a message, you know, like in a melody. So, my friend, and then he was, he was having money. So, he was having money. So, he was having money. But the one who had a bizarre and good guy, he was like, I mean, you know, all these things. You're getting it? I was wondering how. Then you jump on the bar, so you are like, "Yeah, we are not going to be able to get it." So, but that thing was inside my spirit. I would always be saying, "This is the story of my past." Ali, let's go back to the rest. So, you know what I used to do? I had to catch up with my neighbor. So, if I knew something, and because I must sing, I used to come to church at five thirty or six to catch up with my neighbor, and then I my neighbor would be there. And then I would sing, I sing, I sing. I remember when I was, and then I began to lead worship, and all that, lead worship, lead worship. Then God began to put something in my spirit that I, I'm, I'm, I'm coming a preacher. Let me tell you, Steve knows, there is a Amusito. In Narok in the time where I was a new, as you go to Masai Mara, my friend, I would walk from Narok town, I walk to that city, and I would stay that the whole day. The whole day I'm praying and I'm and I'm preaching, you know, preaching you know, in the name of Jesus. I see the leaves, I say hallelujah, honey. That was my life. My sister, my elder sister, 
that uh, man my way to turn and come to second level. One day he called me and said, You're going mad. But if madness is this, then may, may we all be mad. <laughs> Hallelujah. If madness can bring a person to this level, may we agree to receive it. Hallelujah. So the Bible says that in a large house, there are vessels. Some are of honor and some are of dishonor. Now, verse 21, the Bible says, if you want to come to that level of honor, there is something you must do. The Bible says, if a man sanctifies. Yes. Now, another version of the Bible says, if a man consecrates. Another version says, if a man purifies. I, another version says, if a man consecrates himself. He will become a vessel of honor. You see who? You see who? You can be a witch. Mm. Yes. 
essa lá. E o Nidira não sabe fazer nada. O Nidira não é? Yeah, if, you, if, you, if you remain where God was forever, God, God was there. But, but God has moved, God has shifted. He's no longer there. You, if you know God is forever on motion, God is a moving God. Yes, Praise Lord. the name of the living God. And we have to must to be where God is. Yes. Otherwise, if we don't monitor the movements of God, we will be left where God was. You have to know where, when Raven bringing bread to you, servant of God at the brook Kerim. Is it Kerim? Yes. You have to know when to shift and go to Zerapha. Yes. Because now God is not bringing food through the Raven. He has commanded a widow. Yes. Mm -hmm. So if you remain at that Kerim and say, I want the Ravens to bring, you can miss the times of God, the seasons of God. Yes. Praise the Lord. Amen. Is this good teaching? So if you want to be a vessel that can be used by God, the Bible says you must sanctify yourself. Lazima ujita kaze. There is something. In other words, you must work on yourself. Come to neighbor and tell your neighbor, work on yourself. Have you ever noticed the Bible does not say let God humble you. Did you know the Bible says to humble yourself? Yes. <laughs> so you don't go crazy and be like, Father, humble me. My friend, <laughs> you pray that kind of a prayer. You humble yourself like that before. Yes. Because sometimes when He chooses to humble you, you can walk naked in Zimmerman and He's humbling you. Okay, so, so, so before He does, He humbles you, you humble yourself. I'm your neighbor, I'm your neighbor. Are you getting something? Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. What does the Bible say? The Bible says, purify yourself. It does not say, let God purify you. Mm -hmm. It says, if you want to be a vessel, if you want to be a vessel that God will use, in other words, you are the living yourself. Yes. Let me tell you something. You, you, you can go to any heights of glory. We can go to any heights of anointing. We can go to any heights of authority in the spiritual realm. But skill number one, we must walk, work on ourselves. We must purify ourselves. We yes. must purify ourselves. Now, that is what I want to talk about. The process of purification called Death. Death. Let me begin by giving a very controversial statement. God never uses men who are alive. He uses dead men. For the same Coming back, sir. Must be a good student. Did you hear what I said? Very controversial. God uses dead men. And I'll explain what I'm talking about. This is very deep spiritual understanding. Now, read with me 2 Corinthians chapter 4 and verse 7. We say we are just talking. Second Corinthians chapter 4 and verse 7. If you are there, please sing it. And then we'll finish. I want you to read for yourself so that you don't see it. Pastor Simon. And I'll talk about what there I'm talking about. I'm not talking about physical death. I'll show you what I'm talking about. I'm talking about a certain kind of death. Are you there? Second Corinthians chapter 4 and verse 7. These are ministers. Can you read for me? We have this treasure in other vessels so that Can you read that scripture again? We have this treasure in other vessels. We 
have this anointing, we have these giftings in vessels of that are made of other vessels. And the Bible says, so that the can you can you read for me your version? So that the power read for me your version, sister. We have this flesh in Adam vessels. That the excellence in the, the completeness of the power may not be of us, but of God. Did you see there? That we have this, we have this treasure. We treasure the holy. He did. 
when he took Timothy, the Bible says, and he circumcised him. Yes, if your father cannot rebuke you, you are not a son. If your father cannot tell you when you are wrong, you get angry. Yes. No, you are still a child. Yes. If you run away because your pastor rebuke you, you better go. Yes. You know why? You go and become a good member because ministry is for mature sons. Yes. You know there are people in church who you cannot rebuke. Ah, you are good people. Hallelujah. You are good people. If you just love when your father is telling you, God, and all that time, and that is nature of work, and sometimes, God, hey, that's not seem good. There are times that you ask him, are you still good, God? Because of the pain you're going through. You're the preaching, too. There are people who get that. I will not sing today because Janda has been in the house. I will sing. Let me tell you, if you are still doing those things, what are you doing? 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 You cannot be circumcised until you are ready to be naked. <laughs> if you hide your nakedness from your father, you are not a son. Yes. If you want your father to know only your good side, let him know your bad side. Oh, yes. So that he can know how to handle you. Merciless. <laughs> Is that good preaching? A true father will sometimes cause you pain. Mm. And one of the ways you gauge your son is how they behave when they are going through pain. Mm -hmm. How do they behave? Not when they are God is good mm. and all that. How you know your son is how they behave when you rebuke them. Yes. And when you counsel them, mm -hmm. when you tell them you are being foolish. Mm. My father is another one. You know him. Why? He can think. He is, he is a man of things must be done this way. Mm -hmm. And he is a man of time must be time. And so he has raised us that way. One day I, we were going to preach in Kirogoya, remember? And I was to lead the service and he was to preach. And he told me, Tukutane was Tukutane Mudaiga Sambi na I came in that year, I called, he said, Tafta Gari Ukuja, I'm telling you, 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 i where are you? <laughs> what I'm trying to say is, let me tell you, ministry is not for boys. Yes. It's not for the mature. Mm -hmm. I'm telling you, if we are to do ministry, there is a maturity we must come to. There is a one of the ways you know that you have grown to another level in ministry is your level of maturity, and that is what we are calling death. That is what we call purification. So that God can lift us to another level. I told you the greatest healings of the move of God in the church in this generation, it is the flesh, it is the eye, it is the it is the self. There is something I must kill in me if I'm to become a vessel that carries the life of God, that carries the glory of God. I don't want to minister come to God. Are you getting what I'm talking about? Yes. That's why sometimes you, you, you will, there are times you will separate yourself. There are times you will be fasting when everyone is eating. There are times you will be up when everyone is dreaming the right dream. Yes. There are times you will be in the right heaven when people are eating. I'm telling you, this thing called ministry requires death. Yes. If you 
are a pastor, if you are a pastor and your co-workers are still alive and you are dead, you will be stagnant. I think the first qualification for us to raise people into ministry is to ask them, are you ready to die? If they are not ready, tell them, just sit there. Because only those who are ready to get into that place of death can help you carry the burden of ministry. Because sometimes the burden of the ministry is too heavy. You need men who can say, Father, we are ready to go with you, even if you are God. We need a person who, like, is it now you say, I will die. Your people will be my people. Your country, when you die, shall I die too? Not like the other girl called the altar. You know what is the meaning of the word orca? It is rebellious, mm-hmm. big headed. Mm-hmm. Can I? Someone can take this one. There was a sorry, sorry for that. There was someone who used to pick something from and I have one to have it. So, are you aware of it? Come on, please. Huh? Yeah. Yes. <laughs> Where are we? Where are we? Oh. We need, let me tell you. Let me tell you. It is not just gifts you are looking for. It is not just giftings. Uh-huh. Let me tell you, gift without character is destructive. Ask Brother Samson. Mm-hmm. It is not just gifting. It is not just touching the courts of the people. But the touching of the courts, let's see your character. To what level are you dead? Can you raise 
is a church that when we kneel down to call on God, the city will say, where are those men kneeling down? Where are those people praying? Can we raise a minister that can command the rains to stop and it shall stop? Can we raise a minister who can be in the wilderness? He's eating funny food, but people come and say, what must we do to get born again? Man called John the Baptist. We must raise the Johns of this time. Yes. And one of the things we must do is to bring them to a place of death. Everyone who wants to carry the glory and the life of God must pass through this one test. It is not the test of blessing. We have seen enough of fashion. It is not the test of good equipment. We have everything, including the bars have better equipment than us. Yes. It is not about the data, because even the hotels have the best decoration. Mm. We must pass the test of death. Oh God. There are two things that fire can do. Fire can destroy and fire can define. There are things when you put them through fire, they are destroyed. But there are things when you put them in fire, they become more valuable. They gain more value. Who are you? And where are you? Mm -hmm. If the fire is then you are yet to come to that place of glory. Praise the name of the living God. Can we bring the church back to the place where we can command things and they move? What is this that even the government is categorizing the church together with the bus? When they are talking about the bus and places of entertainment, they are also saying the church inside there. Is, is that the kind of shame that we want? Where is this shame that has come that nowadays men don't honor the men of God anymore? People, I remember what days you could not point at the church, but right now people can come and lie right in the church. Where are the days when men would come to the pulpit and they come?
verse 7 and 8. Let's can we look at verse 13. I said something that I've never said. I think now it's speaking in my spirit. I now know who to go with on the on the on the mountain of transfiguration. Yes, sir. It is not error. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. It is those who are ready to die with you. Sure. Hey. Let me tell you something. Did you know that Isaac carried her fire, his firewood? Yeah. He carried his own firewood.
this altar of death. Yes. Let me die. Let my flesh die. Mm -hmm. Let my attitude. Yes. Let my mind. Mm -hmm. Let my let God I'm ready. Take away. Let, 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 let your fire come and consume. Let your fire. Let me tell you. When, when they slaughter animals and they put them on the altar, one of the things that the, 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 the Lord did, the fire came and consumed the flesh. In other words, the fire of God comes on the altar and consumes the flesh so that the spirit can live, so that it becomes life givers. It's a process. Are you willing? Are you ready, brothers and sisters, to always die on the altar? Most of the time, what we come to do on the altar is to ask God for things. Mm -hmm. I want us to change the question. Mm -hmm. We'll be coming to die. Yes. God, I come again. Mm -hmm. I come again that myself will die. Yes. That I come to lay down my dignity. Yes. I come to lay down what I think I know.
guys know. There are times we would worship in the church there and there. Literally, you would see like people. Thank you. 